Hello world, I'm LJ and this is LJ Go Sweden. Today it's time to talk about the latest software update from Tesla, version 2025.32 and also the subversion.3. In the beginning the rumors were of course like that this is like the big summer update, in the end not really a lot. Basically this update brought one major improvement and that is low power mode, however also one slightly controversial update that I will be talking at the subversion 3. But let's talk about this low power mode first. Tesla has created a one switch that rules them all where you can disable all the energy consuming features that might increase your energy consumption. So may it be like the USB port, may it be sentry mode, may it be a battery like precondition or features that run like the AC. Things like these you can now all turn off one click, not only in the car but also in the phone app. Therefore, you just go in the app basically and you select the buttons, either you put it like in the shortcut or you hold it there and then you see that now you have this little low power mode when you click on it, then it activates. In my opinion, a really good feature. However, I have one question. Is there a difference between deactivating all the features that Tesla officially says it disables? I'm gonna try this out in winter when we have like really low temperatures. I notice a drain in battery consumption when my car is parked. And what I'm going to do then is for sure, I'm gonna just measure the loss of percentage over one week, just normal as always. And then the week after I'm going to enable low power mode and see if it makes a difference. Because if there is a difference, that is in my opinion a really, really good information for everyone that even though Tesla says that it's only disabling these things, maybe there's still something going on in the background. I'm really, really curious. And of course I have this version already on my car. So we're gonna switch to the inside to just see how it looks in the software. Low power mode, therefore we have to go to charging in the settings, scroll down, and there you have it, new low power mode, disables energy consuming features when you're not in the vehicle. And there you see the list. And that is the important list. Is there more than that what Tesla actually announces? Basically the usual stuff that always gets like deactivated when you are below 20, for example, camp mode. And while charging with low power mode, sentry mode is available and also um, accessory and also keep climate. Yeah, okay, makes sense. See how your vehicle uses energy while parked in the energy app. And then you get probably linked to this. Okay, enable low power mode to conserve energy. Ooh, that is actually nice. So it really like links you. So I like the linking here. And if you activate it, your vehicle continues to use energy. In cold weather, available energy may drop more quickly. And then it turns on. And if we now turn on the keep accessory power, we get a pop-up, okay, or like we get a message. Accessory power is unavailable in low power mode. So even if it's on, it is deactivated because of the low power mode. So this is all I can show you for the low power mode. So LJ, back to you. Thank you, LJ. And of course, this update, the original version 32, comes also with minor improvements. One of them is interesting because I didn't know that. Dog mode, now you can decrease it to 18 degrees Celsius or 64 degrees Fahrenheit, which I didn't even know that it is like limited for dog mode, but interesting. And then of course the important security fixes, improvement, minor fixtures, performance stuff. The usual stuff that Tesla just doesn't give us more information about unfortunately and based on my information there was no undocumented change as of right now that Tesla has brought over with this update maybe still stuff is going to be discovered but as of right now no information on that so let's switch to that minor subversion upgrade which is not that minor in my opinion Tesla has done a change in their airbag deployment for Model 3s and Model Ys it's still unclear like which version or stuff. I think it's also now hardware free vehicles, not only based on hardware 4 or AI4, how Tesla calls it nowadays. We have to see if it's going to be available for all cars. And the thing that I'm talking about is the frontal airbag system enhancement. That's how Tesla tells it. And I have to say, 
The idea what they are trying to do is great. The idea is basically to improve the safety of a person in an accident by going away, by stepping towards a proactive approach of safety and of airbag deployment. And of course, there is like no easy way for like the system to know preactively if there's a collision besides relying on the cameras. And that is the big thing where I actually have to say, I am not sure if I want this <laughs> as of right now. Because yes, I love Tesla. And yes, I know Tesla has its issues where I'm totally fine with. For example, I know the issues with autopilot. I know that it slows down randomly because there's a big car coming or like a truck or something. And usually I can predict myself when this is going to happen. So I'm basically manually like accelerating so that I can like push through that braking, that phantom braking, which of course a lot of people probably would complain like, why are you doing this? It's like dangerous. And I fully agree it is dangerous, but I just love still using the autopilot. I could of course drive myself, then I don't have this issue. Then we have the phantom wiping which in my opinion is really annoying. I already talked about this thing in my video where I talked about the most annoying things in my car after one year. You can check that out right up there if you want to see what I said there. But yeah, the outer wipers, especially, you know, like the sun is kind of low, the car is just wiping. Why? Like I really, really am annoyed by this because it causes scratches to the windshield. And that is an annoying one, but still it is not causing any damage to me, at least as a person. And also the fandom braking, yes, more dangerous because people behind you could maybe slam into you, which is why I'm even more proactively like having my foot ready to accelerate in case I see someone is like kind of tailgating me or closer and not capable of like reacting to this. But this, what Tesla has done right now is a bit further and a bit more insane because Tesla vision the cameras are now telling basically the, the airbag in a certain way, probably like still communicating with something. You need some kind of threshold to say like, okay, it's going to be a collision. But then before the collision happens, the airbags get triggered and deploy. I see a chance that people will be driving just randomly on a highway. Maybe the sun is like low, you have like trees and the sun is always like like shattering through, not consistent, but like always like blinded, not blinded, blinded, not blinded. And the car just thinks like you're close to collide to something and the airbag deploys. Or other scenario, you're driving like through a city, for example, in Europe, and cars are parked to the right and the left of the road. You're just on the normal road, you're driving, and you know that you will just go in the middle of the road to not crash into the cars. But the car, at least for me, I noticed, sometimes just tells me like, hey, you're about to crash in this car because you're still going like, I don't know, 50 kilometers per hour straight before you do the little swerve. And I'm scared that in those situations, the car says, you're gonna crash, airbag, everything you know i really really don't want to be the guinea pig for that so i actually decided to at least really for now not update to this dot free version until i have some data if there are issues because if there are issues where an airbag is randomly deployed i think tesla has to pull away this feature because it's just too dangerous and i really really don't want to try it even though i have to say it would be really interesting to try out when this feature works. I think also the big issue for me with this feature is we don't have any information how it works. If Tesla would give us like a huge insight on how the camera decision is made and for example give us like a graph where the car says like okay now I would deploy it, now I would not deploy it. To just give us like some kind of feeling of comfortness where you can say like okay it's not gonna happen, we saw the data and it only really happens when you go straight into a yeah another vehicle or something. I really really want to see data first. I don't know how long I'm gonna wait because of course if there is another major update coming I want to update. I want to get cool features if there are cool ones coming. But the last Tesla features unfortunately feel like the cool stuff is missing in a certain way. Like yeah the Rave Cave also got an improvement here that remembers your settings so if it was enabled it will automatically like turn on the Rave Cave when you're parked. I still feel like that there are software updates that could make the car better. Like I already said with the ambient lighting, you can make cool features with the navigation, add stuff like these blinking and 
warning to not go to the left or the right by turning like certain parts of the LED red or things like these. Also something I want is the ability for me to just stand in front of my frunk and the frunk also pops open like for the Tesla Model S and X I think that happens but on the 3 and Y it only works for the trunk not for the frunk. And with that said guys I think that is all I can say for today. What do you think about the Tesla software update, the latest and also the Tesla updates in 2025 compared to for example 2024? Please let me know down in the comments below if you would be willing to update to this latest software feature with the airbag deployment or if you're also kind of worried or at least cautious about this and maybe always have this in your mind that it could happen. As guys, feel free to give this video a thumbs up. If you want to support me by buying a new Tesla because you maybe need one or you just want to change to a car, feel free to use my affiliate link up there because with that one you would not only support me by giving me some Tesla credits but also you get a discount for your next car. But now enough said guys, hit the subscribe button and else we're gonna see each other back in the next video. But until then, have a good one. Bye-bye.